you. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be replacing a motor out of a Dodge Grand Caravan with the 3.6. Uh, hope you find this video helpful. If you do, please like and subscribe. These videos do take a lot of time. Uh, these jobs take a lot of time, so trying to record them and do them at the same time uh, definitely is not the easiest endeavor. So I'd be grateful if you like and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help you. Thanks for watching. Here we go. So the first thing we want to do is take the engine cover off. It just pops off like so. So the next thing we want to do is take the air cleaner box off. The first thing you want to do is take this push pin out of the pane. Pull that up and out of the way. Then disconnect this hose right here, the breather. Comes over to the intake over here. Let's pull that off. You can disconnect this plug right here. The air box, pop these clips off. That one is broke. There's just the three. Pull that up and out. And you kind of have to pull this. There's on some rubber grommets on the back. Get this out is to stick your hand back behind. Pull up and off the rubber grommets like so. Sorry, my light's flashing on me. Pull it up and out of the way. Next, we're gonna take the battery out. Just loosen the 10 millimeter nuts on top for the battery cables. Pull those up and off. Taking the bottom half of the air cleaner box out. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take this 13 millimeter bolt out for the power steering reservoir. Just pull that up and out of the way. When we've taken that off, we're just going to take this connector off of the wiring harness that hooks to the air box. And all you need to do is pull up on it, pull it out of its rubber grommets. The bottom half of the box comes out. So now you might not have to do these steps. I am getting a used junkyard motor that already has the wiring harness on it. So I'm going to be taking all the wiring harness off of the car and putting it and leaving it on the engine so I can move it over. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this plug out. For the purge valve. And you have to take this Pull down off the stud. And then unplug this plug off the evaporator. I guess it's the dryer. Just set the harness over on top of the motor. We can remove this little 
isolator heat shield foam piece. Now I can, can disconnect the fuel line. Screw this small screwdriver and push the tabs in. Pop the fuel line off. Now we're going to be removing the front bumper and clip. So we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket, take the two bolts on the outside out, take a clip remover, remove these two push pins. Now you're going to want to take the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the fender in to the bumper. Take a Phillips screwdriver, turn this tire in, take out these two Phillips screws. And then you're going to want to repeat this step on the other side. So I'm going to hurry and go jump on the other side and do that. Be right back. You're going to want to go underneath the car, pull these four push pins out on the bottom that hold the bumper to the core support underneath. So now that you got everything undone, you're just going to want to come to the sides here and pop the bumper out of the plastic bracket on both sides. Once you've done that, the whole bumper cover. Should come out. Like so. Then also just keep in mind that if yours has fog lights, you will have to uh, take those off as well. Now that we got the bumper off, we can take the upper core support off. Just held on with some 10 millimeter bolts and some 13 millimeter bolts, it looks like. These bottom two right here are 13 millimeter. Looks like these top ones are 10 millimeter. Looks like these crossovers we're going to have to take off because they're hitting on the horns. For the latch, you're just going to want to take the two 10 millimeter bolts out.
plastic clip right there. You're going to want to take it out and just take a screwdriver or something and pry that up and out. And come to the back. You should be able to snake the cable out of the latch. It can be kind of a pain. And the latch comes out and the upper core support comes out. Now we can take the front bumper out. It's just held on with some 13 millimeter bolts. There's also some 10 millimeter bolts right in the middle. That I did not see at first. Let's see, you have those out. Bumper sits on brackets, so you gotta lift it up and out. Now I need to take the trans cooler lines off of the condenser. I just pop these plastic caps off. I just get a pocket screwdriver or a pick. Push these alligator clips out. That's what they look like. You just need to pull both of those out. Once you have both those pulled out, you can wiggle the lines back and forth. Make sure you have a catch drain underneath because they probably will leak some transmission fluid. Take the upper radiator hose clamp off. Take the upper radiator hose off. The next thing you're going to want to do is take this clip out. So you'll just slide that safety pin and unclip it. And then I've already discharged the AC system, so you want to take these two 13 millimeter nuts out and take the AC lines out. I'm going to hurry and do that. It's just too hard to record where they're at. So I'll take those out. We'll be right back. The other thing you have to do is take these clips out and then unhook the cooling fan. So then we can take this wiring harness 
move it off to the side like so. You need to remove this cooler line. You just push up on these tabs to release the bracket. Like so, you have to do that on both sides. Just pull that up out of the way for now. And you're gonna wanna get a catch drain and you're gonna wanna take the lower radiator hose off of the radiator. And we have that upper radiator hose out. Should be able to take the whole assembly and lift it up and out. With the fan, the radiator, and the condenser.